I'm not crying. You are. That's right. This day's upon us. The big man. He's leaving. It's his last game. We owe him a send-off and a half, Chelsea fans. This is a guy who is absolutely a Chelsea legend. One of the best players we've ever seen wear the Chelsea shirt. And do you know what? He just gets it. And at Forest, he was telling us there's blood, blue blood in his veins. Oh, his whole family have absolutely fallen in love with Chelsea Football Club. And the same with us as fans. We've fallen for him. I am going to miss Thiago Silva more than you know. For me, this one feels like this is the this is the end of a chapter of Chelsea Football Club. This was the last guy that got it for me, who really believed what a top club needed to be, how it should be run, the day-to-day -day ins and outs of a top club. He got it. And then on the pitch, he just was levels above 90% of the players that he would share the pitch with. An exceptional, exceptional player. And look, even at his age, I still think he could go and do a job somewhere. He could definitely do one for us. But Thiago Silva, thank you so much. We've obviously got a massive game against Bournemouth. And I know people will question it again, saying, massive, you're playing Bournemouth. Well, Bournemouth have been pretty good this year. They've kind of gone under the radar a little bit. I think a lot of people forget that it was only last season Gary O'Neill saved this club. And then obviously now, Iriola come in and a lot of people are questioning that. But he came in with a, look, not a big CV, but what he'd done in the short amount of time as a manager looked okay. I actually thought he'd put something together here. I felt like if Bournemouth were getting rid of Gary O'Neill, I think I said this in my preview right at the beginning of the season. There's got to be a reason for it. And they're going to push on. That's exactly what they've done. They are targeting a top half finish, which if they beat us is possible. Results do need to go their way, but it could happen. And look, Chelsea, we might need results to go our way as well. So it's going to be a tougher game than most would think. Bournemouth aren't the Bournemouth that their name might suggest they are. They've got a good team full of good players. They're playing good football. Yeah, it's simple, but it's been effective for them. We'll get on to them in a little bit, but let's start with Chelsea because for me, I'm shocked that we are here. Uh, look, the last four, three or four months have been so up and down for me as a Chelsea fan because every single time we dropped points, I felt like Europe was gone. We're now here at the final part of the season or the final day of the season, should I say, and it's literally in our hands pretty much if we can get European football or not. All we have to do is beat Bournemouth, who are in 10th place at the moment. We've lost to them already this season. They've got a striker who's on real good run of form, has, has been all season to get that many goals. It's going to be tough. But look, Chelsea are somewhere where I didn't think they'd be. I didn't think we'd be having this discussion for the final day. I thought we'd be sat in 10th. Be saying, do you know what? How is Pochettino still in the job? At least this is the last time we'll see him. Because there were points this season where it's really been bad. And I touched on it in the final sort of few words I had to say after the Brighton game that stability could be good for Chelsea Football Club. Because what I've seen in the last few weeks has kind of proven to me that one, stability is helpful. We've given him time this season. There's no rash decisions to sack him and ultimately it's taken him a little bit longer than I would like but we're at a period we're at, we're at a point now where I feel like this Chelsea team I can start to back him a little bit I've seen some evidence I can back Pochettino with with some of his decisions they're making sense to me now I feel like it's finally clicked a lot of things into place the last few weeks I, I, I really do think that and suddenly we've seen the return of a lot of players from injury as well this Bournemouth game, we have it all to do, don't get me wrong, but the fact that we're in this position now and we're ahead of United and Newcastle and we literally could finish level on points with Spurs if results go our way, well, that'd, be, that'd be unbelievable. It really, really would. And I'm going to say it, that next season, if, look, if we don't get European football, it's definitely a failure in my opinion. And I think if we get Conference League, that is the minimum level of acceptance I would have to this season. And we've got there in a roundabout way. I, like I said, I don't know how after some of the most embarrassing performances I've seen and the, the draws that we've taken when we absolutely should have won and the mishappenings throughout the beginning of the season, 
and even in the last couple of months as well, where Pochettino is clearly making errors. But somehow we've been getting results recently and his errors have started to sort of slow down. And I like that because ultimately that's what I want to see. I want to see my Chelsea side progressing under a new manager, under a new ownership. That's what we all want to see. And I've got to be a realist here that, yes, I don't think for the long, long term of Chelsea Football Club, Pochettino is going to turn out to be the right man. I just, I'm not sold on whether or not he can win us trophies. But right now, genuinely with the squad and the owners we saw that not adding to this squad in January really helped so let's see if we can be sensible again shall we and maybe not be so rash don't get me wrong if we were sat here and we were in 10th again and we weren't moving off mid-table I would be telling everyone the same thing Pochettino has to go and I feel like the fact that we've gone trophy this this season considering we come this close is really disappointing but going into this final day, I can I can sit here and say that I've seen some evidence. I'm not sure that it's enough, but it swayed me, right? The last game has to be resulting in us qualifying for European football. That's it for me. It's as simple as that. And that would be enough. And I said this, if we get European football and we're lucky and pot scrapes through victories... I don't want him to say. I've said this on record a number of times. I said, however, if we get European football and Poch puts something together and the team clicks and players are starting to perform and they're in the right positions and these players we've signed for big money are starting to understand what's being asked of them, I can get behind it. And that is what I'm seeing. And that's why I'm probably, I'm going to sit here and admit it, I've been swayed a little bit. That's, and, and I'm not going to be the only Chelsea fan, but there's a drastic difference compared now and the last few weeks there was in February. Even the Arsenal game, even the Man City semi-final, there's a, there's a drastic difference. I think Poch learnt his lesson in that semi-final. I think he saw how good we were against Everton and I think he felt like he didn't back that against Manchester City. And ever since... He's backed that. He's backed his decisions. I've said that a number of amount of, a number of times. He's backed what he saw work. And there's been times this season where I felt like he chopped and changed too much. But look, let's get into it, shall we? Because we've had a lot to say already and we've got a big, big game against Bournemouth. This is what I think for the Chelsea team. Pretty much the same, to be honest with you. Obviously, I would have liked to have seen restart. It's not going to happen now because of that sh silly suspension. Mudrick is obviously out for the rest of the season. Unfortunately, he got a concussion in that game, which is such a shame. So I'm going to say that this is the team I predicted last game. I think this happens. I think Sterling just comes in for Mudrick. Why not? That seems really simple for me. However, um, I definitely think Nkunku could probably... Come off the bench and make something happen. Look, if Pot and the re listen to this, the reason I'm saying that Nkunku doesn't start is to protect him and protect him only. If Sterling got injured, I really wouldn't mind. But what I saw from Nkunku against Brighton was so, so good. I just don't want to see him get injured again. I really don't. I want him to just make sure that he finishes the season without an injury. And if it means it's a half hour cameo or 45 because of a forced injury or something, I can live with that. I don't want to see him get injured. He's literally only just played the other night and he looks so good. So let's protect him, shall we? And we've done it so many times. We've rushed players back and they've got injured. But look, do not get me wrong. What I saw from Nkunku on the left-hand side yesterday... Uh, couple of days ago was more than enough more than enough to warrant a start in this game more than enough to to convince me that him on the left might actually be an option going forward because he looked exceptional I just don't want to see him get injured and obviously I'll touch on it as well our form for the first time in a long while doesn't have a red dot in it it actually doesn't which is crazy a, a draw that should have been a win against Villa other than that, it's four wins on the bounce going into the last day of the season. I don't really need to comment too much, do I, on a lot of these players. They've been exceptional recently. Look at the back line. Who there has been playing poorly? None of them. Casado and Gallagher, they're not playing poorly. Casado looks exceptional. Connor, Connor has been, for me, so good all season. He's got to be so close to being player of the season, obviously. I know Cole Palmer is, but... 
Conor Gallagher, fair play. What a season you've had. Um, Cole Palmer, obviously. Madueki has been good enough for me on the right-hand side. Look, maybe there's Sterling and Nkunku. That, maybe that is a shout. But for me, I don't want to risk Nkunku. I've said that already. And Jackson, again, he's on the hunt for 15 this season in the Premier League, I think. And it looks like he's going to do it. Come on, Nico. I'd love it if you could do that. My player to watch is Thiago Silva simply because it's the last time we're going to see him in a Chelsea shirt. I want to see him giving the armband tomorrow. I want to see him leaving that pitch at some point so we can stand up and give him a round of applause and really let him know how much we appreciate him. I want to see him after the game and I just want to clap and I want to say thank you for everything. You helped deliver a Champions League to Chelsea Football Club. You absolutely got what this club is and you stole our hearts and Thank you so much. It's it's going to be tough tomorrow. Believe me, I have got an affinity to Thiago Silva forever. What a player. Thank you so much for what you did for our football club. I, I don't really have many other words to say. I'm sure tomorrow it's going to be a difficult watch waving and saying goodbye to him for however long that is or that might be because he did say he'd be back and I hope that he is. I really, really do because... He gets Chelsea Football Club. And I think without him being in the side and around the managers and things like this, this transition might have just been off the charts in how bad it's been. I think he has been integral. And look, there's been times when the performances haven't been quite at the level that we'd expect. And then there's been times that it was so much more than we ever expected for the player we were signing on a free transfer at his age and I think I can safely say that for the majority of his time at Chelsea Football Club, he's been our best defender by quite some way. He's a leader that didn't wear the captain's armband enough, in my opinion. He could have quite comfortably put that on and a top, top player. So look, thank you, Thiago Silva. Thank you for all the memories. Thank you for the trophies. It's been a pleasure watching you pull on the Chelsea shirt. Let's just touch on um, Bournemouth, actually, shall we, before we wrap things up. Look, Bournemouth are in okay form for where they are. They're, they're two wins out of their last five. They've lost a few as well. Their manager, I was listening to his press conference. I think he speaks really well. I remember him as a player at Athletic Bilbao. Um, obviously played a lot, a lot of games for them. Didn't know too much about him personality-wise and how he spoke. I'm really impressed with him. I've been... Really impressed with them throughout the season when I've watched them. Look, it's not a lot, but I've watched them a few times. And they're a good outfit. And there's a couple of names there with good Premier League experience. And there's a couple of exciting players too. I've highlighted my player to watch in Solanke. Um, let's touch on Solanke, shall we? A former Chelsea boy. A guy that was here till, what, 2017? Something like that. I watched a lot of Solanke as a youth player. A lot. He's a very similar age to me. I used to go down and watch the youth team and I'd get all the hype about who was going to be the next superstar. And believe me, the numbers he were putting up had me convinced he was the heir to the throne in terms of Chelsea strikers. And it just didn't happen and he got a big move to Liverpool at a young age and I think they felt like he could do the job for them and it, it didn't really work for him. And then he's gone to Bournemouth, I think on, at first on a loan and then it's obviously become permanent. This is the season I expected for years from Dominic Solanke. And I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, yeah, I thought this was happening after the form that I've seen in recent years from him. But actually, this is the season I always hoped would happen. Shame it's not in a Chelsea shirt because we could do with an extra 20 goals. Of course we could. Um, but he's been exceptional. I think it's 19 Premier League goals going into this game. For me, he'd definitely be someone I'd look at. 100%. I'm not sure what the response will be in terms or the reaction from the fans will be because, look, he's playing against us. He, he never really played for the first team, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, I'll be I'll be interested to see him, see how he's playing, see what he looks like. I, I haven't seen Solanke play football actually in person in a long, long time. And I, I watched him, like I said, an awful lot. He was part of the team that I watched a lot growing up as a kid. When I was... 16 to like 17 that sort of age I would go and watch Chelsea's youth team and I'd make a point of like studying who was going to be the next best thing and he was very very good 
Very, very good and very highly regarded and scored a lot of goals. And finally, we're seeing him obviously turn out to be the player that we thought he would be. An exceptional player to score that many goals in a Bournemouth outfit is says everything you need to know. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of clubs looking to sign Dominic Solanke because you don't score that many goals and it go unnoticed, believe me. It really, really doesn't, especially when you're in that position in the table. Had a look at the rest of the team. Um, Kirk has been injured. The manager said he might expect him back. He also said that he thought uh, Romain Fev would come back into the side, potentially. Um, if not, it would probably be Kelly at left back. Um, Christie and Cook, they're just absolute engines in that midfield. Cook, obviously, has been around for a long time. Adam Smith is a, is just been... I remember him scoring a Weldy a few seasons ago, and probably 10 years, to be honest with you. He's been around... Um, Clive at Tavernier, Semenu, they can cause us trouble. They could cause any side trouble on their day. So, look, they're a good side. They're a good outfit. They're full of good professionals. And um, we definitely need to watch our step against them. It's very simple for us going into this. Chelsea have to win. Nothing else for me. I don't want to see a draw and people saying that's enough. Just go and do your job, Chelsea, and win. And sometimes miracles do happen. Look, I'm not confident that Sheffield United turn up, but you never know. I'm confident that Newcastle won't be happy after their loss to Manchester United, so I'm sure they'll rectify it. And Manchester United are going to want to win as well. They've got a big game coming up against City in the FA Cup final, so they want to go in on a bit of good form. Ten Hag as well. Look, his job's going to be at risk. So it's all to do, but Chelsea simply have to win. And if we do... We could potentially be in a position to get Europa League football if things go our way. Obviously, we could finish in a position that would get us Europa League football, but it wouldn't be confirmed in, until Manchester City win the FA Cup, hopefully. If not, if Spurs lose and our goal difference is good enough, we could potentially finish in fifth place, which for me would be an exceptional turnaround. I don't, I'm not going to say exceptional season, but an exceptional turnaround, all things considered, believe me. Um... I was kind of tongue-in-cheek when I said I hope Chelsea would be back at fourth this season. But if we could finish fifth, oh my gosh, that from where we were, that would be unbelievable. And I think sixth is sixth and Europa League football would be it for me. I'd be I'd be happy with that. Sixth or sixth or seventh or conference league, however it is, is it's good for this team. I really think that, but Ultimately, I don't want to see Chelsea playing in the Conference League. I don't think that's where we belong. So come on, Chelsea. A massive, massive game. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. This is the last preview of the season in terms of Chelsea. It's It's been an absolute pleasure going into this game. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's liked and subscribed so far this season. Um, I've enjoyed it so, so much. Making content, talking about Chelsea. <laughs> It's not all. It's not been sunshine and rainbows. Rainbows every game, but uh, I've learnt a lot. I've met a lot of good people along the way, and I've I've had a lot of fun doing it. So thank you so much. We're obviously chat after the game. Of course we will, and and hopefully I can sit here and say we've done it. We've got European football, and we're back sort of where we should be as a club because we shouldn't be out of Europe. It's it's as simple as that, um, and the better the competition the better in my opinion. It's as simple as that. So look, all to do, massive, massive game. Like the video. Let's try and get 30 likes on this. Why not? We've been doing pretty well on the likes recently. Subscribe if you're new. We're about 20, 25 subscribers away from two and a half thousand subscribers, which is crazy to me. We've built some community here. I love chatting to you guys in the comments and on the lives and on the other streams I go on as well. So thank you so much for watching and showing your support. All the best. If you're not a Chelsea fan, all the best for your clubs in the final day as well. I hope you hope you get what you want. And I will see you after the game to, uh, to let you know my thoughts in a bit.